presentation on the College of Architecture, Construction and Planning. Looks like we have about 31 people in the room. Uh, thank you all for joining us here today. Um, I'm going to do something here. I believe I've shared a little poll. If you'd like to try and answer that, that poll there, see, gauge your interest in undergraduate programs if you're interested in the architecture and design side or on the construction side. And thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Justin for helping out here, getting us all set up. Uh, thank you so much for your help, Justin. I'd like to thank Nicholas Hernandez, who is really leading our, our effort here in terms of UTSA Day and these, these open house. Uh, presentations and the extraordinary circumstances in which we find ourselves. So thank you very much to those, those two for helping us out here, here today. Uh, we are still bringing you our, our presentation, even though we're in a slightly different format. My name is David Moxier. I'm here to talk to you about our College of Architecture Construction. Our mission statement, we're committed to excellence in education, scholarship, community engagement, context of planning, design, and construction of a sustainable built environment. You'll see that word sustainable a few times throughout the presentation. Essentially, what that means is sustainability, the ability to meet the needs of the present without sacrificing future generations' ability to meet their needs. Why is that important in considering the built environment, what we talk about the built environment? The built environment is everything that humans make, man-made spaces in which we live, work, and play. The infrastructure that supports that, both seen and unseen, and our experience of that, right? So how that makes sense with regard to current and future generations is because what we design and build will oftentimes be around a lot longer than we are. It's going to be there in a multi-generational capacity. It's going to exist a lot longer. That requires an incredible amount of thought and care, and planning and execution in an organized and considerate way to protect the health, safety, and welfare of all the people who might enter those spaces. So sustainability is important to think about. That what we build is often going to last for multiple generations. Here are our core values. Development is learn learned global citizens. Global citizenry essentially means awareness and an understanding that what we do affects others broadly. Ethics and professionalism. There's some very specific things that we're teaching you at our, at our college. And oftentimes our students have a very specific idea about what they want to do when they graduate. And so we're able to uh, tailor that curriculum, that instruction to consider those challenges that, that, that we face, those considerations that we face when designing and building the built environment. We work in teams. We work with professionals of many different types. Requires working with sometimes large teams of, of people and the way in which you work, the way in which you consider decision making, the way in which you interact with your colleagues and peers is important. Here's that word sustainability again, diversity and multiculturalism. When we design and build buildings, they're for everyone, not just for a few. They're placed in different areas around the world where culture and the heritage of a place is often important and should be considered, must be considered. Our building should serve everyone, whether they're able-bodied or not. Collaboration and leadership, this is a hallmark in the design and construction fields. 
There is no one person off in the corner working by themselves. It's a team effort. It requires input from all different areas of that professional team. Creativity, critical thinking, and innovation. These are the hallmark of a designer, but also the construction manager. To follow the plan that was created by the designers. And that does involve creativity. Also critical thinking, some difficult challenges that, that face us when imagining buildings and how they serve people, how we protect the health, safety, and welfare of persons. Our administrators, our professor and dean, Dr. Julian Browning. He's also the, the dean of our College of Engineering. Myself, undergraduate programs, associate dean for undergraduate programs. We have an associate dean for graduate programs. And department chair of architecture and our department chair. We have two undergraduate programs. We have in the architecture on the design side, we have our bachelor's of science in architecture and our bachelor's of science in interior design. Those are two undergraduate programs on the design side. Graduate level, we offer a master's in architecture. A couple different versions of that, depending on what your undergraduate degree is. If you have an undergraduate degree, a four year bachelor's of science in architecture, you come back. Ideally, we would want you to come back and stay here for your MR2. That's your professional degree. That's what you need to actually get licensed. If you have an undergraduate degree in anything else, we would want to recruit you into our MARC 3 program. It's about a three and a half year degree, professional degree. That's what you would need to be licensed. The MS in architecture is a, a graduate program that's focused on research. Those graduate degrees are accredited by NAB. On the interior design side, that's a Bachelor of Science in Interior Design. That meets the uh, professional standards defined by CIDA. The accrediting body for interior design. On the construction side, it's a Bachelor of Science in, Const in Construction Science and Management, and that is accredited by ACCE. At the graduate level, we have focus in historic preservation, our historic preservation certificate. We have faculty doing research in that domain, and then we have an urban and regional planning program at the graduate. We're a little over 800 students total in our college. And that's almost 700 undergraduates and about 120 graduate students. We are in the Monterey building. That's downtown off of Frio Street. In that building, we have several research laboratories. We have a fabrication lab where we have laser cutters or 3D printers. We have a wood shop with equipment, table saws, CNC cutters, band saws. You get trained how to use that equipment and then you are able to use those. We have uh, research uh, centers such as our Urban Future Lab. Our uh, graduate programs are STEM, STEM uh, oriented. We have a new um, sustainable architecture research focus as well. We have faculty doing research and sustainability, both from a technical standpoint and from a, a humanist standpoint. Engage in historic preservation and as well as urban and regional planning. Our high performance design. I think it is about 12 to 15 hours of focused study in one of those three. Uh, so, architecture and design. 
I certainly appreciate everything that we can come up with creatively. This is a work by Zaha Hadid. It's certainly out there on, on the leading edge of, of, of creative design. And uh, in, in our programs, we encourage students to pursue their, their design ideas. Design can be extremely, can be extremely historic and, and uh, very much related to the, the area in which it is situated. And as I was saying, it can last for hundreds of years, right? We're looking at a building that's still has the cultural relevance that it, it did back then, even today, possibly even more so, right? San Fernando Cathedral, the heart of Main Plaza in San Antonio. Wonderful quality, quality of stone and craftsmanship, the beautiful ornateness of its windows and openings, porticos. It still has that relevance even, even today. Our students are, we work the old fashioned way with drawings and T-squares and models and physical models. And what we're asking our design students to do is to visualize uh, and design three-dimensional space. And so, yes, we use two-dimensional tools, but we also use three-dimensional tools. Very much spent making things creating, imagining, writing, thinking, and talking. Uh, we had an eight-year accreditation in 2016. That was the longest accreditation that we could get. So it's, that's the national accrediting body. Uh, they are checking on us to make sure that we're teaching what we should be teaching and that our students are learning what they need to be learning. Um, so the curriculum is, 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 is updated. Uh, Board. We'll be back in 2024. Check up on us. We're about 24 non tenure track uh, track faculty and about 18 tenured. Some of the work that you would see produced in, in, in our college. Here you're looking at um, on the center left, that gorgeous rendering here. It's really a section through the building building that is uh, porous in, in terms of its visibility from the interior to the exterior. Um, this project is a lot to do with sustainability and bioclimatic design, We're studying light and air and maximize within the space, but also how you can ventilate um, a very contemporary building such as this, a deep covering to protect the glazing here, it also provides an outdoor porch that transitions between the interior and exterior under that canopy. But you're looking at a diagram laid over the top of that section that shows airflow. On the right side, in, in the middle, you're looking at wall assembly and details and how the building sits within the landscape. Here's the order of, of materials in that wall envelope section and then a detail at the very top. The kind of drawings that uh, in those little circles that you might see on the drawing set. Here we're overlaying them in a design communication. We're even showing um, a, a palette of materials in those circles even further to the right, what types of materials that we see on, on the landscape. Different thumbnail renderings in the upper right. <clears throat> Here we're, we're, we're looking at uh, land use, we're looking at site ecology. Building is very much about its site in a sustainable way. Addresses collect wisdom and feedback loops. Nice project. Architects are certainly designing with virtual materials, but we also go to the job site and we also oversee the actual construction of, of what we design. So the architect, an architect works both in the office and out of the job site as well. Architects work collaboratively across many disciplines, whether it's at school or in a professional setting. There's some more design work from our students. On the lower left, we see a section in this building and then a rendering in the upper left. This is a nightclub, VIP lounge. We see an exploded axonometric drawing on the right. This was all done in the computer. The tools that we have are incredibly sophisticated. Here's a sculptural form. It was designed digitally. It was a program called Rhino. 
And then what we've done using our Adobe Creative Suite, we stitched that digital fabric, stitched that, that digital imagination object into the landscape. Here we're working with the community, showing them how what could happen address the civic scale so down an entire street tell them about what we found these are wood shop and fabrication lab here on the right students that are building an installation that went up along Houston Street if you're looking to be a registered architect it take about 10 to 12 years your undergraduate degree plus two years of graduate school you would do an internship in an office working under a license and then your state board exams all about 10 to 12 years these are the salary estimates there on the right interior design Design is all about the interior, the furnishings, the finish, the equipment, materials that you're walking on and sitting around, sitting on colors, feel that space, which is incredibly important. The interior designers, design board. You get a bunch of little vignettes and a bunch of uh, visions about what that space might look like, what it might feel like. Space adjacency analysis and diagrams, detailed floor plans, communicates with the client. The interior designer will create a materials palette presentation board. So little swatches of each material that you would find, whether it's upholstery or, or chairs or tiles, lay that out so that they can see and feel and touch the materials, a little swatch of materials. There's an NCIDQ exam, and then you're a registered interior designer there in about four years. There's our salary estimates on the right. Design culture. Students spend a lot of time in the studio. Whether it's working on the laptop or the physical output and paper here behind us. Spend much of your time in the studio. And the culture of that studio becomes important. Certainly burning the midnight oil is a tradition of architects. But then at the end of the day, you get to show it off. Jury, a panel of your peers, but also members of the professional community. Here, Michael Lynn uh, developed some 3D drawings, and so she was having. We have an IT department with a print shop, again, a fabrication lab, Laser cutters and 3D printers. They'll sell supplies, modeling supplies. Enrollment criteria. So, in terms of your high school class rank, direct admission, the top 10%, the top 25%, if you have that certain score, your ACT. If you have those scores on, on your SAT, uh, but you're not in the top 25%, it'll go to a school transfer student. Here's the criteria. If you're less than 30 hours or above 30 hours, these are those, those requirements. Interior design, it's the same criteria. We'll look at a couple questions here that, that I see up in, in the chat board. Um, what programs do y'all use? In terms of design programs on the design side, uh, students use um, Revit. Uh, it's a, a building information modeling software. It's extremely powerful. It's a parametric software. You're really building a virtual building in a virtual setting. 
uh, parametric in the sense that every material, every element in that model is as a set of parameters assigned to it. BIM models can get incredibly detailed in terms of the number of parameters that they assign. So if you think about, I'm dragging a model piece into this model and it's a piece of steel, right? Now you can embody that, the parameters of that virtual piece of steel with as much information as you can plug into it, how much it weighs, what its properties are, its bending properties, um, even where you've sourced that, that from, and you can create an incredibly quantitative model from that. The BIM model then becomes the, the platform through which all your drawings can become takeoffs of that model. It's a way to document that a, a design project and what many professional offices are, are moving towards is Revit, Autodesk Revit. We also use SketchUp, we use Rhino as, as well. What does an ordinary day as an architecture major student consist of? The design studio is the central class. Uh, that is, as a freshman, that's a three hour class as a, as a sophomore, junior, or senior, or graduate student, that is a four hour class through the day. It's either a morning class or an afternoon studio. The design studio is where most, much of your inquiry takes place. You would go to class uh, in your design studio, it might be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then other classes might be either in the morning on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday, Thursday, or in the afternoon, depending on when your design studio is on Tuesday, Thursday. So what I typically see is students want to load their schedule to where they have studio on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then two or three other classes on Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, your other classes are uh, your core curriculum courses uh, in the architecture program. Um, in the upper division courses will be courses in architecture history, structures, environmental systems, sustainability, courses such as those. But your design studio would be the, the main course. Um, the main source of inquiry where you interact with your peers and the instructor, you're showing the work, you're talking about and exploring the work um, since the last time that, that you met. It's an active inquiry course. Where you're drawing, you're modeling, you're sketching. You may be working on a computer. You may go and print something out back to your desk and then talk it over with your instructor or with other with, with your peers. Is there any classes in the main campus? Um, all of our architecture studios are downtown. So if it's a core class or a class outside the major, that's offered at the main campus. But everything that's offered specific to the major is in the Monterey building downtown. Would it be beneficial to me as a construction management major to get an architecture three degree as well? If you wanted to work as an architect, yes. Yeah, if, if you want to work and I'm going to talk about construction management here in just a moment. Uh, we, we have had people who have double majored uh, those. Um, people are working in the construction industry. So they had an architecture, uh, bachelor's of science in architecture, and went and got a bachelor's of science in construction. Is there a new building for CACP on main campus? No, there is not. We're in the Monterey building downtown. Uh, what is the process for transferring in if you didn't make it as a freshman? Uh, so here on, on the screen there, if you're less than 30 hours, here's your GPA and coursework requirements. If you're above 30 hours, there's your GPA and coursework requirements. Um, is it necessary part of an interior design major to, to study abroad? Yes, the study abroad program is, is part of the degree program. And we send you to Urbino, Italy. This get rowdy ready link there. Where you would go. Study abroad is in Urbino in Italy. It's an Italian city state. Here's Urbino. Yes, our students were there here recently. We had to bring them all home, uh, but that was unnecessary, necessary for us to do. Um, but it is a center of um, Italian culture. You know, we go to Rome, Florence, Venice, Bologna, Milan as well. Um, a lot of history, scene, sketching, 
here in Italy, advancing global citizenry. Students that are traveling. Um, we try to keep it as affordable as as possible. About five thousand dollars more than than what you would spend if you were living on or off. around 40 to 45 architecture or interior design students every year. The installation that the students were building, now they're putting it on Houston Street, the different style of installation on, on the right. What laptop do you recommend for architecture? Uh, the IT um, department there will make recommendations for uh, your, your technology. Um, I see students using are really using the, the the most memory and 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 um, software intensive programs such as Revit, using um, some of the latest laptops. Um, I see them using sort of gamers laptops uh, that have um, high rendering ability, video cards, things things like that. Um, if that's already in your repertoire, then great. If it's if if not, then there's those are uh, skills, digital skills, which uh, we have classes that we take to introduce you to those digital programs, digital design programs, again, such as Rhino, such as Revit. Rhino is more of a free form modeling. Barely applying to UTSA, currently in SAC, they mentioned there was a max transfer. Yeah, so we have a, a transfer agreement set up with, with SAC. Um, talk to your counselor there in, in SAC. They should be able to tell you exactly what is transferable. Well, thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. So Justin's... Uh, Great, great, thank you. Is study abroad mandatory? Yeah, just describe that. Uh, what are some of the uh, minors one can do? Minors? Um, you can do any, any kind of minor. I see some students minoring in art history, some students minoring in uh, business. Can we major in architecture design and double major in business or minor in business? Certainly. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, here's some students doing some community engagement, whether it's um, uh, certain civic programs under one roof, fixing up um, historical houses. You're welcome. You're welcome, Natalie. Uh, design build projects in Raymond Russell Park or around the area here in Galveston. Here our students designed this, this portico, this little shade here. Really nice, look at the, the tapering of these beams. Here's project. Here's an interior installation. Is there a separate application for the architecture design program? Students get hands on from the very beginning. We host guest lectures. Faculty write literature. We have a scholarship program. We handed out about eighty thousand dollars in scholarships last time around. Kind of wraps up our architecture presentation there. On the apply Texas, you'll you'll indicate um, if you're interested in architecture. You're welcome. All right, so right on time. We're shifting over to the construction science and management side. And if you think about the traditional role of the master builder uh, from history onwards, uh, construction was always part of the master builder. Uh, but as our, our buildings have become more okay and, and uh, the process more intensive, we've necessarily had to separate those roles. So. 
designers design it and then hand that design off to the contractors, to the construction manager, to build what you have designed. Um, it is um, now a, a career and a necessary career path that has become so much more important. Um, and so the idea to make it a science um, is not a brand new, but it's one that is in high demand. Students that graduate from this program, 100% job placement. We cannot graduate students fast enough. It's, it's not that they every one of them has a job waiting for them or, or a job offer, that every one of our students has multiple job offers coming out of this program. So construction science um, a manager is a, a career that is in high demand. Um, again, buildings are more complicated um, and the construction of buildings is, is a more complicated process. So we need more people who, who understand how to lead multiple, many groups of people all uh, building a, a project that's going to last over several months. So we expect this area, this sector, business sector to continue to grow into the foreseeable future. So. Um, it's a very competitive program, and again, we graduate our students fast enough. Um, when I project this, this image looks a little better, but everything at the lower part of that um, part there are our construction specific courses. First year, you're taking all of your core courses, and after that, into your second, third, and fourth year, many of your courses are in the major. In the summer of your sophomore year, you do a surveying course. And the summer before your senior year, you do an internship uh, that is a paid internship for your program. It's at that internship that we see a lot of construction firms are trying to steal our students. And wait a second, they've got to graduate first. Um, but it's a, a robust and growing job market. Coordinate and supervise a, a wide variety of projects for cost, time, quality, and safety. That's what you do as a manager. You manage people as well as um, uh, project participants and relationships with stakeholders. Manage the process and the relationships as, as well. Um, You'd work in the field or in the office and success through communication, collaboration, and leadership. You're a construction manager, you work with professionals of other disciplines as well, working with the architect, working with subcontractors, working with clients. Work happening on the job site and in a job site trailer. Our students do very well coming right out of school. We've seen our students have rapid uh, career mobility. Exceptional students, so we're looking for the highest GPAs. For good students, if you have a GPA of under, under three, um, we're looking for qualities there, but there's there's a it's a very competitive. Based on the GPA and the number of seats, so the higher the GPA, the better. Um, in your experience, you do field visits. Public speaking and guest speakers from the professional community. We host career fairs every year where we introduce you. If you haven't already formed that net, uh, networking relationship with contractors of in the city and in the region, our career fairs allow you to interface with them. Materials and testing here. Here's a, a concrete cylinder here. We're testing the strength concrete of the mixture before we go and pour you know, yards and yards of concrete. We want, we want to make sure that we've got the right type of mixture. Cost estimating. It's 
down to a science now. Different programs, classic quick bid. So here, how do you estimate how much that building is going to cost? Well, you look at the types of materials that the designer has identified, how much you have of that material, and what is the associated labor with that. You quantify that. It all adds up to certain numbers, right? And you keep track of that, make sure that everyone's working towards, towards that goal in an organized way. There's a BIM model, this is a Revit model, this is a building without its architecture, right? So this is almost like we're looking at a human being without their skin. Muscles and endocrine system, digestive system, circulatory system, et cetera. We're seeing that of the building. We're not seeing any architecture. We're seeing um, HVAC and, and duct work. We're seeing mechanical and plumbing runs. We're seeing foundations. We're seeing all the systems of that building that, that keep it running. Now, the BIM model allows us to study both the layout and the efficiency and performance of that building in a virtual setting. So we can test the building in a virtual setting before we ever build it and therefore optimize it while it's still, while changes are still represented by a click of the mouse instead of a lift of the crane. We run all the traps on that project before we ever get into construction. Again, career fairs, we have a relationship with the, we have a, a construction advisory council, members of the professional community that are informing our curriculum, our intent, uh, what we're teaching our students, also funding scholarships, uh, community engagements, and there's our students at the tailgate here. Competitions, other community engagements, Habitat for Humanity, sponsored by the National Association of Home Builders. Um, again, a little more than half of that $80,000 of scholarships came from the construction site. So here's our undergraduate enrollment for construction. Back to the question. To do a double major, who do we need to contact? Is there a separate application? Um, it's, it's not. What, where I have seen double major, and that's, a, that's an ambitious undertaking. Um, the two double majors that we've had, um, they both got a degree in architecture and then came back uh, and finished their construction degree. But it didn't take them very long to finish that construction degree. Some of the, the, the courses um, were able, able to count. Um, so there is no formal way to do that. You would simply go back and register as um, when you graduate, you, you would have the, the intent um, to, to, um, to major in, in, in both. But that's something that I would encourage you to, to talk to the department chair of both departments about. Both the people who did that were both ladies and are now senior project managers in, in the firms that they, that they work for. So if that's your intent, um, please, please talk to the, the department uh, chairs and as well as your advisors about that intent. Is that for the design program as, as well? Uh, usually we you know, students focus on either architecture or interior design. Yeah, great, thanks. Thanks, Justin. And that's essentially what I'm showing here, uh, the major specific programs. Yeah, that link will take you to. Uh, yeah, the Suli. Thank you. Roundy ready. Oops. Okay. 
get my link here. Guys, that's all I have for you here. Um, any other questions? The advisor there. Yeah, thank you, Justin. If you're not from San Antonio, what, um, yeah, great. What area of the state are you from? Just kind of curiously. To type that in, anyone from the Valley area, from McAllen or Brownsville. Austin, okay, El Paso, nice. Laredo, okay, Woodlands, great, Valley, Laredo, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Ventura, right. Arlington, okay. In what year of the CSM degree do you get the field visits? You start doing that in your, um, from your second year on. How many years to complete a BA in design? It's actually a, a Bachelor's of Science, so a, a BS in, in design. That's a four year degree program for the Bachelor's of Science. It's a Bachelor of Science in either interior design or Bachelor of Science in architecture. And to be an architect, you would need that master's degree, so the, the plus two, so it's a four plus two. You're welcome. Does construction science also study abroad? Some of our construction science st students do elect to go, but it's not built into their degree program. Where can we find the degree program with the detailed courses for here? Let me show you that here. I believe everyone's on my screen right now. This college website. Advanced programs. There's construction. So there, there you go, James Lee. Uh, what if someone doesn't meet the requirements to enter the interior design program? What are other options? Uh, so we have the interior design or we have the architecture program. What does it mean to be admitted into a CSM major? CSM major? Yeah, the construction science and, and management. So uh, this is the flow chart here. So in your first year, your American history, your AI academic inquiry course, language, philosophy, and culture course. These are your core courses, your writing and your math. And then your second semester is history, creative arts, physics, uh, 
life science electives and then writing. In your second year, your life science elective, public speaking, intro to business management, and then your construction materials and methods course and your technical communication course. In your fourth semester or second semester of your second year, statistics, construction uh, materials and testing, project management, BIM for construction management, and construction safety. Then during that summer, here's your construction surveying course. In your third year, economics, accounting, structures, construction estimating, and then MEP systems. And then in your sixth semester, or second semester of your third year, these courses here, survey and finance, structures two, professional planning and scheduling, construction estimating two, and construction law. And then in the summer, your CSM internship. And here's your courses in your senior year. Um, there is a capstone project, sustainable building practices. For construction science, do we need additional exams or internships like in architecture? Uh, you have that internship in your senior, in the summer before your senior year. It's a paid internship. Uh, but no, once you graduate with your degree, um, you are off and running. They hire you. What, what what I've seen is they hire you right away and they, they put you as a, a deputy project manager on working right under someone. After a couple of years, you're on your own. Thing for for uh, but but for design. Yeah, so with design with interior design, you have the uh, NCIDQ exams after you graduate with your undergraduate degree for architecture. You have what's called the architects registration exams. Part of your licensure. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so we have about five more minutes. If you have any more questions, type them into the chat box. Um, me and Mr. David are here to answer your questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, do many students take on the challenge of a double major? I've only seen two. Uh, they're both outstanding students. They're both ladies. Monica and Kirby. Monica is now a senior project manager with Skanska. She graduated about two years ago. And Kirby graduated last year. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, it is about 85 to um, percent male construction science to about 15 percent female. Those numbers are are uh, changing. So um, um, we, um, women tend to do very well in that in that field.
uh, uh, that the architecture program is challenging and takes up a lot of time. It does. It certainly does. There's a lot of time being being spent in the in the design studio. Yes, um, it often takes over your your life. Yeah. Um, you know, in in terms of the academic experience on the design side, it really becomes about the design studio. How long to finish the second major? They finish their second major in a couple of years. Monica was really smart about it. Yeah. And she, um, you know, all of, all of her, her extra classes, she would then put towards the, the construction degree. Uh, she was very, very proactive um, about uh, what, what she wanted to do. Uh, and she had good information from her advisors and, and her department chair. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you very much. James Lee, Crystal Z. Thank you so much for your time and patience with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, Lisu Lee, I hope I, I answered your uh, question. You're welcome. Same to you, Crystal. Thank you, Lasuli. All right, David, thank you for the tremendous presentation. No, you're we welcome. Thanks for your support, Justin. Questions. You bet. Take care, everyone. All right, guys. Have a great day.